here we have type 2 projectile type 1 projectile which we studied was a oblique projectile that is a particle or an object which was projected from the ground at a certain point at a certain angle theta from the horizontal here type 2 is a horizontal projectile that is a body from the top of a tower not necessarily from the top of a tower uh, at any height above the ground a body is projected horizontally so that is also going to follow a parabolic path so we need to find the equation of this horizontal projectile and we need to also find the time the body takes to reach the ground and let us find many more things here here as uh, we learned how do we analyze the projectile first we resolve the initial velocity as you can see the velocity itself is purely horizontal so initial velocity along the x-axis is u initial velocity along the y-axis is zero because the vector is purely horizontal if the vector is purely horizontal the vertical component is going to be zero it's not at an angle theta so no need to resolve the initial velocity itself is along x-axis there is no y component and uh, we know acceleration along the y-axis is minus g because it is in the downward direction only acceleration acting here is the gravity which is in the downward direction and there is no acceleration along the x-axis so acceleration along the x-axis is zero so since uh, there is no acceleration along the x-axis velocity is constant along the x-axis and along the y-axis acceleration is constant so we can apply the kinematic equations along the y-axis now how do we analyze this how do we prove the path of this projectile is also parabolic so i'm going to take one point p of x comma y like how i did for the oblique projectile in the same manner i'll solve even this projectile also the point of projection this is a point of projection which we have to take it as the origin point of projection i'll, I'll just show it to you over here this is the point of projection this is my x-axis and this is my y-axis and i have taken one point here which is that point p of x comma y i have taken one point which is nothing but p of x comma y now here i'll apply the equations from o to p so from o to p what all you can apply from o to p along the x-axis along x-axis what equation can we apply along the x-axis velocity is constant we have only one equation that we can apply v equal to s by t v equal to s by t so what is the velocity along the x-axis when the particle is moving from o to p the velocity along the x-axis is constant which is nothing but u all the time it is nothing but u all the time so this implies u is equal to what is the displacement along the x-axis when the particle is moving from o to p what is the displacement that it has undergone along the x-axis the displacement that it has undergone along the x-axis is x and along the y-axis it has undergone a displacement of y so u is equal to displacement along the x-axis is x divided by t so from this uh, we can write time as equal to x divided by u call this as equation number one call this as equation number one now let us try to write the equations along the y-axis so if i write the equations along the y-axis Along the y-axis, uh, acceleration is constant, so we can apply the kinematic equations like how we did in oblique projectile. Now here, you know, since a time is there and displacement is there, I'll apply the equation displacement equal to ut plus half a t square. You can very well write what is, what all you know along the y-axis. Along the y-axis, you are knowing the displacement along the y-axis that is equal to y, but since it is in the downward direction downward direction we take it as minus so displacement along the y-axis is minus y the initial velocity along the y-axis vector is purely horizontal there is no initial velocity along the y-axis that, that can be taken as zero and acceleration along the y-axis is nothing but minus g because it is in the downward direction so you apply all this over here so because I, I was knowing s u a and I was knowing t from equation one, I took the equation is equal to u t plus half a t square, but particularly it has to be used along the y axis. So if I substitute the values here, minus y equal to zero into t minus half into a y is minus d, so minus of half into g into t square. So therefore I get uh, y equal to y equal to half into g into t square. Y is equal to half into g into t square keep this equation as it is keep this equation as it is call this as equation number two we will use this equation two now here what is time from equation one so equation two if i consider equation two implies y is equal to half into g into t square this implies y is equal to half into g into what is the value of t from equation one x by u 
because I'm finding the equation of the projectile. I know when I have to find the equation, there should not be a time term in it. That's why I'm removing time and I'm writing in terms of only y and x. Therefore, what will be the equation y equal to g into uh, this uh, square is for both. So x square divided by two into u square. This is the equation of the horizontal projectile. One of the important equations for problems like how we had for oblique projectile tan theta x minus g by 2 u square cos square theta into x square. Similarly, we have y equal to g x square by 2 u square. This matches with the form. This matches with the form y equal to some k x square, which represents a parabola. Therefore, the path of the horizontal projectile is also parabolic. That is, if you are projecting the body with the speed u, horizontally at a certain height from the ground, it is going to represent what? It is going to represent a parabola. This is equation number two. Now here we have taken this as equation number two. Let us try to find the time of flight. How do we find time of flight? Time of flight of the horizontal projectile. So I know the equation y is equal to half into g into t square. What do you mean by time of flight? Time taken for the entire journey. Time taken for what? Time taken for the entire journey. So for the entire journey, what will be the displacement along the y-axis? It is going to be h. Time of time for the entire journey. As we saw here, if you see carefully here, for the complete journey, what is the displacement along the y-axis? For the complete journey, Point uh, P was represented by two coordinates, X comma Y. Point P was a general point. When the particle strikes the ground, how much displacement it has covered along the Y axis? How much displacement it would have covered along the Y axis? For the entire journey, it would have covered a displacement of H along the Y axis. It would have covered how much displacement along the Y axis? It would have covered a displacement of H. Therefore, for the entire journey, for the entire journey, displacement along the Y axis is going to be H. Therefore, if I write Y as equal to H, equal to half into g into t square. So this implies t square is equal to 2h divided by g or time is equal to root of 2h divided by g. This is the time of flight of the horizontal projectile. One equation was the equation of the projectile and one equation is the time of flight of the horizontal projectile which is equal to root of 2h divided by g.